So let me share my screen. Share screen. OK. So I want to discuss really quick expected value. And in one of my other uh, one of my other videos, I did talk about the fact that expected value is the same thing we, we represent it as e, e of x is the same thing as the mean of a probability distribution, which can be found by taking the sum of all of the random variables times their corresponding probabilities. So I discussed this and what a probability distribution is in another video. Um, but the expected value is the same as the mean or average of the probability distribution. It's the expected outcome. On average, what do I expect the outcome to be if I continue to do these things? Gisting, right? So I wanna do this example because a lot of, I always get a lot of questions about it and it's not hard, but you have to create the table first. So uh, let's see. So we have a situation here. The student council is hosting a drawing to raise money for scholarships. They are selling tickets for $7 each and will sell 900 tickets. There is one $2,000 grand prize, three $200 second prizes, and 17, dang, you could really win some money, $40 third prizes. I just forgot to, let me get my calculator loaded. You just bought a ticket. Find the expected value for your profit. Round to the nearest end. All right, so I'm going to make a table. X, P of X. In my situation here, X represents the outcome, right? Um, and P of X is the probability of each outcome. What are the possible outcomes here? So let's see. Um, I'm going to underline a couple things. So they're selling for $7 each, and they're selling a total of 900 tickets. So I have one $2,000 grand prize. So one outcome is that I could win. But if I do win the $2,000 grand prize, I still have to consider the fact that I did spend $7 on the ticket. So my first outcome is gonna be the $2,000 minus the $7 that I spent. So $1,993 is my first outcome. <laughs> so, um, Let's do the probability of that outcome, okay? What is the probability that I win? Well, I know I'm gonna win 1993 because I spent $7 and I won 2000. That's my net winnings. Um, but the, there's only one grand prize winner. There's a total of 900 tickets. So only one out of the 900 is going to win. So the probability that you win is one out of 900. So let's see if that helps as I continue. There are $200 second prizes. Okay, doesn't matter that there's three of them yet. The outcome is, let's say you win a, a $200 prize. If you win the $200 prize, you still spent the $7 on the ticket. So your net winnings is $193. The 200 grand, uh, the 200 prize minus the $7 ticket, because you, you spent $7 on the ticket. But there are three, let me go do this. Let's do it in green. There are three total of that prize. So three out of the 900 could potentially win that second prize. So the probability that you win a second prize or the $200 prize is three out of 900. You could also win $40, right? That's another outcome. But you did spend $7 on the ticket. So your net winnings is the 4D minus the seven. So you could potentially win $33 after you subtract your costs, right? The amount of money you spent on that mm -hmm. ticket. Um, and there's 17 total possible um, third prizes. So the probability that you win, the third prize is 17 out of 900. Now, um, if you remember, in my other 
um, in my other video, we talk about probability distributions. The sum of the probabilities has to add up to one. And so far, the way that this is going to add up to one is for the numerators to add up to 900. That doesn't happen yet. So there's, there's another outcome. There's another outcome that is um, not here yet. So, oops, so what is that outcome? Um, well, I only talked about winning so far. I didn't talk about losing, which is probably more typical of my luck when I buy tickets to these kind of things. Um, I could lose. So well, how much am I losing? I buy, I buy a $7 ticket. I don't win anything. So I lost $7. So I have a negative 7 outcome. And what's the probability of that happening? So if you think about it, right, I had 17 possible um wins for the third prize, three for the second, and one for the first prize. And I know that the numerator has to add up to 900 at the end. So I have to get whatever's left over. What's the probability that I lose? And I just lose my $7. So 17 plus three plus one is 21. So here, I'll show you on my calculator since a lot of people like using that. So I have to make it to 900 and 21 is already taken. So 900, minus, I'll show you this way, 17 for third prize, three for second prize, and first prize. I have 879 more possibilities of losing. So 879 out of 900 is the probability that I just buy a ticket and don't win anything. Now you could always verify that this adds up to nine uh, to one total, which if you want um, your fractions to add up to one, then you have to have the numerator match the denominator. So this does, this becomes, if I were to add it up, which I can verify real quick, if I were to add up this column, which is what this notation represents, I would get the 900 over 900, which is equal to one. So um, my probability distribution is looking good. Now you could always verify, right? So, oops. Um, so one two $2,000 grand prize, one out of 900, three 200 grand prizes, three out of 900, 193, and $1740. So everything is looking good. All right, now, <clears throat> um, I want to calculate my expected value. That's what I want for this problem. And you know what, let me get rid of this. I'm gonna do this right now. I just verified that <clears throat> this added up to one. So here's my formula, right? I need to take the mean of a probability distribution. So I need to take each of the random variables and multiply it by each of their corresponding probabilities and then take the sum of that. So it's not a huge table. I could do this by hand. Um, this is what this is gonna look like. I like to sometimes extend my table and do this part because what this means is take each of these and multiply by the corresponding probability. So the first thing is going to be the 1993 times one over 900. And I'm gonna simplify that 1993 times one over 900. I'll probably put that in decimal form. Let's, let's simplify that. 2.21444, let's take that. 2.21444. I'm going to take a lot of digits to the right of the decimal place, at least five to six, because I'm going to use this value to continue to calculate until I get to the end. Try not to round too much until you get to the end result, because if you round um, a value that you're still using to calculate something, then you're going to get a little bit more error in your final conclusion. OK, so I'm not rounding too much. Five to six digits. Um, the next one is nine, uh, 193 times 3 over 900. So let's do that. 193 times 3 over 900. And I get 0 0.6433333, 0 0.643333. The next one is 33 times 17 over 900. Let's do that one. 33 times... 17 over 900. 0 0.623333, And last but not least, this is a negative seven times, what was that, 879 out of 900. So let's see what I get for that. 
oops, um, actually I pressed that twice by accident. So negative 6.83, 6667. Uh, oops, I forgot to write that. Negative seven times 879 over 900 is equal to negative 6 point, I forgot, 8383, forgot again, 666667. All right, so technically what I did, right, was this part of the formula, the x times p of x. I did that for each one of my outcomes. So now, you know, your summation symbol, right? This symbol here, summation, I'll use a different color. <laughs> I like purple. Summation, this is the symbol that implies take the sum. I want to take the sum of the x times p of x column, right? x times p of x, take the sum of this column, and then I'll get my expected value, right? That's all the formula is. And I'm just going to plug it into my calculator. So I'm going to go back up here to the 2.21444, right? Which is the first one. Plus, just add them all up. What is this one? 0.643333, that's this one. Plus the 6233333, that, oopsies, wrong way. That's this one. Plus the last one, the negative 6.83. And I'm expecting a negative outcome. Yeah, negative 3 point, <laughs> negative 3.3. We're rounding to the nearest cent, right? So negative 3.36. So negative 3.36. Now I want to round how they asked me. This is my final conclusion. I'm done. This is my expected outcome. This is my expected value, which is the same thing as finding the average of the um, overall situation of the probability distribution. And I expect, on average, to lose three dollars and 36 cents well yeah i mean there are possibilities of winning there's actually a lot of possibilities of winnings for this particular um drawing which is cool but more than likely you'll lose something and if you play more than once right okay you could win some lose some but on average you're probably gonna lose <laughs> so this is how we find the expected value and i think the hardest part about this particular problem is that you have to create the table yourself and then go ahead and use the formula because the formula is not hard but i hope that makes sense i wanted to do at least one example regarding that and so i think um i think hopefully that helps all right so let's stop this recording